Yes, and welcome to Vasily's Garden. Folks, I'm going to ask you the question, what makes your garden grow? What is it? Is it chemical fertilising? Is it organic fertilising? Is it the life in the soil or the rain or the sky or the sun? What is it? Don't tell me it's a chemical fertiliser because I won't be happy and you shouldn't be happy either. And I've been beating the drum for a while now and I'm going to be beating it even louder as the segments progress. We're going to be talking more and more about the life in the soil, the life beneath our feet. It is vital so we start looking after it because that's where it all starts from. Now plants are full of nutrient density and they get that from the life in the soil. I've said that before, but they have this wonderful connection. Now whether it's a drought season or a hot sunny day or just a rainy day as well, there's a connection going on and there's a microbe for every element and nutrient that exists in the soil and the fungi that help decompose the material to make it digestible by the microbes. Now them together work into a colony of a world where we have never seen, we have never explored ourselves as a typical gardener that we are, or me that is. But once we get our hands in it, you earth yourself, you feel it, you feel the energy because there's nothing but life in there and you've got to keep it there. Now when that connection's broken, when that connection's broken between your soil and your plants, and then your plants get start, or get start to get attacked by insects, whether they're chewing insects or sucking insects. And by the way, those little insects that walk around with those little feelers, well, they're not actually feelers. They're at little infrared antennas that know when the plant is suffering or malnourished because insects cannot eat a healthy plant that's full of nutrients. They can't digest those nutrient minerals in the plant. That's why they go around and eat all the weak leaves or the weak plants because they can digest them and they're important in the cycle in the cycle of your garden so if you've got insects in your garden and you're bombarding them with insecticides all you're doing is killing the life in your soil and killing the plant in fact you should be treating the soil so the plants can start feeding for themselves properly and connecting with the microbes now one of the most important elements is calcium. That's right. You've guessed it. I've been holding it all this time. You haven't noticed by now. Well, calcium silicate, one of the most vital nutrients because it trucks all the nutrients. It unlocks that corridor between the microbes and your plants. Black grit does that. That's the purpose of black grit. The calcium phosphate magnesium silicate, vital minerals that go into your soil or nutrients that goes into your soil to help your plants absorb all the other stuff. Now, by by nature, I won't even say by nature, by habits, we've been using chemical fertilising in our gardens. It's all over the place. You can look at every garden centre, they all sell them. That's fine. That's the way it's been educated. That's the way we've been doing it for the last five, ten decades. Now those chemical fertilisers, in actual fact, are doing more harm to your plants and soil and the nutritional density of your plants. Because your plants look like beetroot, right? But if they're growing with all the chemical fertilizers, they're imposters because they won't possess the nutrients that a beetroot possesses when it's grown organically like that with a microbe connection. So you need to go back to that. Now, by doing all that chemical bombarding, your plants are starting to get nothing but nitrates in the soil. And those nitrates can be so high that it locks up all the other vital minerals, nutrients that the, the microbes can produce and the plants can't take up. So you put the black grid and that's what reduces it. Your soil should have 75% ammonium, nitri uh, ammonium nitrogen and about 25% nitrate nitrogen. The chemical usage that we've been doing, it's been the other way around. We've got 75% nitrate nitrogen, which means that's what's locking it up. So keep pumping those wonderful chemicals in there. You're going to love your plants just to look at. That's about it, if they survive. Start treating it naturally. Get some black grit into your garden and mix that in with your organic fertilizers. Don't put it on its own only. Add your compost in there, add your manures that's decomposed properly. Use our superfood or use a compost as such. Blend it through and you watch the magic come to life. Now for those who have been using black grit in your garden for a number of years, comment below, send us a message, let me know your successes with it. And if you, even if you haven't had the wonderful success that many others have, I'd love to hear from you anyway because we can research and understand exactly what's going on in your garden so we can help you better your garden to be able to have the success that we should be having. And as I look around folks, 
you know, very little damage in my garden, apart from the birds, which don't really care whether we've got calcium silicate in the soil or magnesium or whatever else, they'll just keep digging it up because there's life in the soil and that's how it should be. Plants are growing slowly because we've got a cooler climate here than most other regions across Victoria. So my plants are doing okay. Our rockets, I've got to pinch the heads off these rockets because they're about to come to flower, but that'll cause them to multiply. The celery act has gone nuts. The heads are starting to form at the base really well. We've got pak choy, broccoli, wombok, we've got rapa going on in here. And this bed here got demolished by the birds, folks. They literally turned it over half a dozen times. That's why I had to net it over the top. So we've got spinach going here, some red lettuce, and a couple of replacements going on there because they got dug out. But that's bird damage again. Uh, broccoli, garlic, carrots, lettuce, chicory, endives, all coming along. Onions in here. This bed here, again, destroyed by the birds. But we've replaced them and they're kicking on really well. They've actually started to take off well and I'm happy about that. More potatoes and some cauliflower, broccoli and more lettuce here, folks. And this is what it's about. Grow your own produce. We're going to start harvesting very soon. In fact, I ate some rocket earlier on and I put the, the twig in my pocket because I couldn't finish it off because it is so bloody tasty. Now, you can buy rocket at your local supermarket and I guarantee you it tastes like nothing. It just tastes like paper. There's, I mean, a little bit of green or grass if you're lucky. Taste this here and it'll blow your, your ears out or your eyes out or your socks off, whatever that expression is, because that's what it did with me, folks, because it's all full of nutrients and the nutritional density is so high and it's important to be like that because food real foods should be measured by the nutritional density i'm going to keep repeating that drumming it into people's heads so when you walk into a supermarket and you look at the produce and you go and put it on a scale it should be telling you how much nutrient is in there rather than the weight of the plant and it's not going to be a case where the big boys start turning around and saying hey a lettuce by scientific measurement should have x amount of nutrient um, of this and that in there no, that particular lettuce that you're picking up, how much nutrient are in that, in that physical lettuce that you're picking up. Not the one that they give you as a general guideline. So the general guideline can tell you, yeah, all this has got that and that and this and there and everything. Now I'm starting to sound like a Greek, but <laughs> the fact is produce should be sold by the amount of nutrient that they carry, not by the weight and the moisture. That's the important part. And you're gonna start with a bit of black green in your garden and organic fertilizing. That's all you're gonna do. And you're gonna start working with that. And we're gonna teach you how to build your gardens and get it ready for springtime. Cause you need to learn how to do it correctly the right way. I mean, there's never the one way only. There are many different options because we've got so many different micro microclimates. So factor all that into it when you put it into practice and take some good from me from other presenters as well and other gardeners across the states and the world that are all caring about the same thing that's the life in our soil a little bit of this will go a long way folks you can get some on our website vasilisgarden.com everything you need and book yourself in our workshop as well so you can learn more about it and come out here in real time and help me build some more garden beds and when you do come here we may actually go around and taste some of the produce as well Check it out at VasilisGarden.com from Lee Vasili, Maresi.